All right, so let's start chapter seven, uh, which deals with cellular respiration in Bio 101. All right, now what cellular respiration is, these are the mechanical reactions that extract energy from molecules. Now, this is what we're gonna look at in the next two chapters. So this part is cellular respiration, this part is photosynthesis. So here in cellular respiration, we're gonna look at how we're gonna take organic molecules with oxygen and break them down to produce energy, ATP. And in photosynthesis, we're going to look at how we're going to take carbon dioxide and water and, uh, with light energy, and we're going to make organic molecules. Okay? So, before we get further in here, I just want to point out that all these chemical reactions that we're going to talk about are part of metabolic pathways. And a metabolic pathway is a series of linked enzymatic reactions. So, it's very rare that we have just a one reaction that occurs. We're going to see several reactions until we get to a product. So most reactions are in pathways that are, uh, are metabolic uh, reactions, and most of these are what are known as oxidation and reduction reactions. So oxidation and reduction reactions are redox reactions. So an oxidation reaction is a reaction in which a molecule or an atom loses an electron. All right. Now we need to think about this. Electrons carry the energy, so if something loses an electron, it loses some energy. So Right? You, you just take this here, if we take sodium and chlorine together, it's going to make sodium chloride. But the sodium becomes, you know, it loses an electron here, and the chlorine gains an electron in this. All right? So that sodium gets oxidized, lost an electron. Okay? So lost electron, lost energy. A reduction reaction is a reaction in which a molecule or atom gains an electron or electrons. All right? So if you gain an electron, that means you've gained some energy. So here, the chlorine got an electron from the sodium, so it became reduced, okay? So uh, gain an electron, became reduced, right? Now these redox reactions always occur together. So if something's gaining electrons, something else is losing electrons. Okay, so let's go ahead, and this is looking at aerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration is the extraction of energy from glucose in the presence of oxygen. So we're going to take glucose with six molecules of oxygen, producing six molecules of carbon dioxide, six molecules of water, and it's going to produce energy, or ATP. So aerobic respiration makes anywhere from 30 to 32 ATP. As which I said before, only, that's only 40% of the energy that's, made, uh, that's in a glucose molecule. So, there is another uh, form of respiration, and that's called anaerobic respiration. We'll get to that after we're done with aerobic respiration. Now, as I mentioned before, aerobic respiration occurs in the mitochondria. So, mitochondria is an organelle in which aerobic respiration takes place. Things I've talked about with mitochondria before is they have their own DNA, they have their own RNA, they have their own ribosomes, right? And they are double membrane. So that inner membrane has all these folds in it, and those are called cristae, all right? And we have, uh, inside of that inner membrane is the matrix. So that's a jelly-like fluid, similar to cytoplasm, found on the inside of the mitochondria. Now we do have a space in between these two membranes, all right? And that is known as the inner membrane space, all right? So let's look at steps in aerobic respiration. And the first step in aerobic respiration is glycolysis. So this is showing us all the steps in uh, aerobic respiration. Now, as I should point out, right, not all these are single uh, chemical reactions that occur. So let's go start with glycolysis. If we take glycolysis here, oh, this is also showing you something. Glycolysis occurs outside of the mitochondria. All the other reactions are going to occur within the mitochondria. Okay? So... If we look at glycolysis, just a word, glyco means sugar, lyse means to split. We're gonna split a sugar. So let's look at glycolysis here. So this is a breakdown of glucose into two molecules of pyruvic acid uh, or pyruvate, all right? So this is the first step in both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So anaerobic respiration occurs without oxygen, aerobic occurs with oxygen. This is found in all organisms. Glycolysis is found in all organisms. This step in of itself does not require oxygen, and this takes place in the cytoplasm. Now this uses what is known as substrate level phosphorylation. 
So substrate level phosphorylation is a formation of ATP when a phosphate group is transferred from an organic molecule onto ADP. So here is our um, organic molecule. We're going to take the phosphate off of that. We're going to add it onto ADP. So we make that ATP there. All right. So let's look at the steps here. Now, there's a lot of steps shown in here. I'm going to break this down into four main parts. So the first part, and that's what we're looking at here, is the energy investment phase. So here, uh, we're going to take three reactions. So we're going to start off with glucose. We're going to take three reactions here, and we're going to add energy onto that glucose. And that's going to use, actually, two ATP. So we're going to actually burn some ATP here. All right? The next part here is we split uh, that glucose into two of these molecules known as G3P. Okay, so we split that glucose into two G3P. The second part is the energy harvesting steps. All right, so all these steps occur twice because we had two G3P at the end. So here, each G3P has energy uh, removed, making an NADH. So this is an NADH right there. So NADH is an electron carrier. All right, so you can think of an electron carrier, it's an energy carrier. So we took another molecule called NAD, we added a couple electrons and a hydrogen ion to that, and we made NADH, all right? Also, that G3P has energy removed from it twice again, making two ATP, okay? So, um, and so this results in the end in pyruvate, or also known as pyruvic acid, okay? So if we look at the net end here, all right? So if we look at the net end, we only made two ATP, so we used two ATP, we formed four ATP, so our result out of this, well, we only get two ATP. We made two NADHs, and we made two pyruvates. Okay? So, the next uh, reaction is called a transition reaction. So from here, so this is just showing um, NAD, uh, NAD here. Um, so, the next reaction is going to occur within the mitochondria. And this reaction is known as a transition reaction. So this reaction that oxidizes pyruvate with the release of carbon dioxide. This occurs within the matrix of the mitochondria. So uh, glycolysis occurred out here in the cytoplasm. Now we're within the mitochondria. And this only occurs if oxygen is present. Now I do want to point this out. This step does not require oxygen, but it won't occur if oxygen is not there, all right? So once again, everything occurs twice because we had two pyruvates out of glycolysis. And so essentially what's going to happen here is we're going to take that pyruvate. Uh, we're going to extract some energy from it, making an NADH. We're going to lose a carbon dioxide, so one of the carbons gets removed here. And we're going to add on to this another thing called acetyl co uh, uh, another uh, enzyme here called CoA. So, all right. So, uh, so this results in what is known as acetyl-CoA here at the end. So uh, the net result out of this is that we get two NADHs, we get two carbon dioxides, and we're going to get two acetyl-CoAs. Because right? once again, everything occurred twice because we had two pyruvates coming into this. So the next thing here is what is known as uh, the Krebs cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle. And this was discovered by Sir Hans Krebs in the 1930s. This also occurs in the matrix of the mitochondria. And it's also known as the citric acid cycle because citric acid or citrate, uh, if we go to this right there, citrate, is the first uh, product of this uh, reaction. Okay. Now, this is a cycle. So the final product right here, oxaloacetate, is one of the first reactants. Okay. So anytime we have a cycle, we're going to end up with what we started with, all right? So uh, this is going to take acetyl-CoA from the transaction, transition reaction with this oxal acetate. That's going to make citrate. That's the first step that occurs here. There is no main product out of this cycle. We're going to talk about another cycle in the next chapter. There is going to be a main product out of that one. Here, there's no main product. We're just trying to do energy extraction, making these energy molecules. Okay, so once again, everything occurs twice here because we had two acetyl-CoA's out of the transition reaction. All right, 
So the net end here, so I'm not gonna go through all the steps on this one, but the net end here is because everything occurs twice, we get two ATP, we get one, two, three times two now, so six NADHs. Once again, electron carrier, energy carriers. And now here's another um, energy carrier, electron carrier is known as FADH2. Similar to NADH, uh, it is electron carrier, carries energy. So since we had two turns here, we get two of those FADH2s, okay? So two ATP, six NADHs, two FADH2s, and four carbon dioxide. So we get two here, two turns, four carbon dioxides, okay? So once again, everything occurs twice, right? So now what we've done is a glucose molecule had six carbons in it. Back here in the transition reaction, we lost two. And in here, in the Krebs cycle, we lost four. So now that glucose is completely broken down. We've either made ATPs with that, or we've made uh, these NADHs and FADH2s.